everybody welcome to my channel Nana M my name is Lynn if you're new a very warm welcome to you and if you are a returning subscriber it's lovely to see you back today is Saturday and you will have just watched the two from Sainsbury's Hall so I hope you enjoyed that most people seem to uh, like it I have never actually been and done a haul from Tui before so I keep saying Tui that's the airline, two from Sainsbury's. So I thought what I would do today is something a little bit different. I thought I'd do the second half of a QA and a and just a little catch up. So if that's something that you think you might be interested, please do make yourself a coffee or whatever. Put your feet up, relax and listen to me waffling on. Mm -hmm. I've got mine. I'll put it down for a minute. So yes, today is Saturday and this morning I have been to an now you won't believe, I keep saying I'm many manifesting things, but there's a lot of coincidences if I'm not. I've recently been to the opticians. Anybody that follows more, my channel will know all this stuff already, but I've recently been to the opticians and I asked if I could have contact lenses. He said no. Um, I've got a stigma, so contact lenses aren't suitable for me, blah de blah. But they suggested that I get a pair of reading glasses only. I wear their refocals, get some reading glasses only for your close up work, and that might just help to with your eye strain. It's fair enough. Got myself some reading glasses. No, 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 no. Couldn't cope with them. They're really, really good just for reading and for close work. But if you look up to speak to somebody, everything's blurred and it was sending me dizzy. I'm sure over time I would have got used to them, but I wasn't prepared to um, do it because I didn't like the feeling of feeling dizzy. So I took the glasses back. Anyway, while I was there, she said to me, I have got glaucoma and I have been under the hospital for years about the glaucoma. So she was asking me what when was the last time I went to the hospital, when I went for the eye test. So I said, you know, I can't remember. I said, I'm, I think I've either got lost or I've been discharged. So she said, no, no, you don't, you don't normally get discharged from the hospital when you've got glaucoma. She said, if I were you, I would ring up. Anyway, I thought, well, I will do. You know what you like. You have a busy life. You think, I'll do it next week. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it whenever. Anyway, um... The story with the glasses goes that um, I couldn't cope with them. So I took them back and um, asked for very focal lenses to be put in the new glasses, the new frames that I'd bought. So at least I'll have two pairs. So that's that. I haven't picked them up yet. They're going to be £185. Said it would be a week to 10 days before they were ready. I haven't heard anything yet. Anyway... That spurred me on to think, I'm going to ring the hospital this week and find out, have I been discharged? Lo and behold, about a day later, an appointment comes through for this Saturday, today, nine o'clock, um, ophthalmology department, whatever you call it. So, but it's to check on the glaucoma. So my appointment was for nine o'clock. So I've been there this morning. And uh, the upshot of that is I had a scan, I had a field test and they tested my pressure, blah, blah, blah. And it turns out my left eye is absolutely fine. No problem with that whatsoever. But my right eye, where the glaucoma is, from 2021, where I had two black spots, we all have one black area. Everybody has. In a normal eye, you've got a blind spot. So you're... Everybody always has one dark area. Um, but in 2021, I had two dark areas. Today, they found three dark areas. So the glaucoma, the, the nerve is being, you know, has got worse kind of thing. So anyway, he said, depending on what your pressure is, we may have to think of something different medication wise or even laser treatment. I also have a cataract growing, but it's not significant enough for them to do anything about it. So anyway, he tested the pressure and the pressures, he wanted it to be between 13 and 14 and it was 16. 
So he said, it is a little bit up, but it's not up enough for me to start to worry. So he said, I want, what we'll do is we'll leave well alone because you seem to be a bit stable. He said, and I'll have you back within uh, either in six months or nine months, we'll check again. And if it's gone worse at that point, we'll start to look at, you know, your medication. Because when you do a field test, don't know if you've ever had one, but they cover one eye up, like they always only do one eye at a time. And you have to stare at this little dot in the centre of a screen. You have to move. Your head's in it like a chin thing and a, and a thing here. And you have a, a clicker button. And you, you, you've you got to focus on the dot that's in the middle. And there will be dots flashing in different places on the screen. And you have to click the button every time you see a dot. But it's checking your your, your vision your field of vision is because you to concentrate on this one dot in the middle. You haven't to move your eye, otherwise the test is no good. So I had that done and I had a scan and that's what it's shown. So that happened this morning, I went at nine o'clock. So that's good, isn't it? So there I was thinking, I'm sure I've been forgotten. And then lo and behold, um, the thing comes through. And then you'll have all, all seen my Teddy Blake bag. Absolutely delighted. And it's only just recently I've, I've been thinking, I wonder why Teddy Blake have never contacted me. Lo and behold, I get a Teddy Blake bag. I keep trying to manifest the lottery numbers, but that's not happening. <laughs> anyway, should be greedy, I got an handbag. So I thought, yeah, why not do something a little bit different and do a Q&A? So I've got the questions from the first Q&A video that I did. And for anybody that didn't see that, that wants to see it, I will put a link below in the description box if you want to go and have a look at that one. But we did, how did I meet Harvey? We did, how long have I been married? What was my job before I retired? Why did I start YouTube? What does my family think of me doing YouTube? What do I use to film, edit, etc.? Do I still have a caravan and what's my favourite place to go? What's my dream holiday destination? What's my favourite meal to cook? Do I get time to read? If I could bake for a celeb dead or alive, who would it be and why? Have I found that I dress differently since I retired? And was I popular at school or was I shy? So they're the ones that I've already answered. So um, the first one that's come up is, what's my favourite thing to do and what crafts do I do? Well, I have to say, my favourite thing to do is my YouTube, really, I think. My favourite place to be is in the kitchen, in the house. So I like baking and I like cooking. I like crafting, very much I like crafting. I like to upcycle things. I like to create things. Um, so like I like to do my own wreath for the front door. Things like that, you know, I like home decor. So every season, normally, I haven't done it this time, but normally every season I'll do my shelves out. So they are due to be done. So I like anything like that, DIY, making things, repurposing things. And I can do basic crochet, but it is basic. I did when I was a baby crochet a couple of blankets. And I, I always do... Um, a pure cotton, white, pure cotton crocheted dishcloth. Yeah, I buy the cotton and crochet myself a dishcloth. So yeah, I like that. My mum was fabulous at it, but... And knitting's too slow for me. I get too impatient. But crochet grows quite quickly. So yes, uh, crafting really. Any type of crafting. I love to be creative. And I take after my mum for that. She won a scholarship to art school and wouldn't go because she wanted to go and earn some money and get a job. My granny was devastated. But she could do anything, my mum. Yeah, I like sewing, but it's basic sewing, not intricate sewing, just basic sewing. Yeah, so anything crafty. So that's that one. I don't want to go on too long, otherwise we'll run out of time. Um. Uh, do I spend a lot of time doing housework as my home always looks lovely? Well, every morning when I get up, I always make my bed, put my cushions on and everything, tidy my bedroom before I even come downstairs. 
I don't always get dressed. Sometimes I'll come down, have a cup and go back and get dressed. But I always do my bed and everything before I come downstairs. I think that's important to do that. And so my bedroom really, most of the time is always, you know, tidy. And then um, as for downstairs, I kind of clean as I go, if you know what I mean. So it never gets out of hand. I hoover every single day. And I just polish as and when I feel like I don't. Well, I don't polish. I've never, I never use polish because I've been told by my auntie never to use polish because it attracts dust. She had a furniture shop, and she all she ever used was a very damp, a wrung out just damp cloth, and you wipe the dust off. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're moving it to somewhere else. So you use a damp cloth, wipe it off and then buff up your furniture. You don't even need to buff it. And that's what she did with all the furniture in her shop. So she knows what she's doing. So I don't ever polish, I just wipe. And um, I just do as and when I see, I see it. If I see it, it needs doing, I do it, you know. Yeah. And it never really gets too bad. And then, of course, every now and again, I like, I'll do the stairs, you know, and I'll do the paintwork and I'll do the skirting boys, but I don't do them every day. I just do them as and when I think they need doing. Yeah. So I just keep on top of it. And I find that is the easiest way for me so that I don't get overwhelmed with anything. And there's only me and Harvey living here. So there's really only one person making a mess and it's not me. So... How do I stay so slim and what healthy advice would I give to us older ladies? Well, um, I don't always stay slim. In fact, very often I'll put weight on. I fluctuate up and down, up and down. And I have recently been, as you will know if you watch my channel, to um, where I had like a health screening thing and I had all my arteries checked. Part of that screening was you to do like a fitness test thing on a bike all wired up with wires and they did my bmi and they said my ideal weight i would have to lose nine pound so i'm overweight but what i did what i have found is that um i've cut bread out i thought i was allergic i thought i was celiac and gluten intolerant so i sent for a gluten test because every time I eat bread, I bloat. Anyway, I'm not gluten intolerant at all. So there must be something in the bread that makes me bloat. And I can look like I'm six months pregnant. I can start off slim in the morning and get fatter as the day goes on. Would you believe that? But it's true. But overall, I always used to be between seven and seven and a half stone. All my life, I could eat whatever I wanted. Never did any exercise, but then I were always very, very busy. So that in itself, you know, I would never still. But as I've got older, I'm about I'm about 10 stone now. Something like that. And I keep trying to get down to nine something, but it, it's, it doesn't seem to be happening. But I'm not dieting at the moment. I'm just eating healthy. I do eat the occasional ready meal. And not ready meal, processed. But I try not to eat much of it and I, and I do make very, very healthy meals most of the time. But I'm not, I'm not anal about anything, do you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying I will never eat processed food again. I will never eat a ready meal again. What I'm doing is I'm being selective and I'm being very, very careful and I am reducing on those kind of foods and eating more of the healthy foods. I make my own yogurt, as you know. I've cut out bread, but then last week I did buy myself um, a, a, a brown seeded loaf and I froze it all. And I've just been taking, twice now I've had bread. I've had it this morning and I had it one day earlier on in the week. So I've had it twice this week, but normally I don't eat bread, but I just wanted to treat myself. Um, I'm eating lots and lots of the chocolate oaty cakes. Try not to eat too many of those. Try not to eat crisps. I haven't baked a cake 
for us to eat. I baked cakes for other people to eat, but I haven't baked a cake for ages and ages. So I have been thinking about baking a cake again because I've cut it out for so long. But I, I'm wondering if it's something in the flour. I don't know. That's making me bloat. But anyway, I'm just being careful what I eat. Don't exercise as much as I should do, but I am constantly on the go. So I, I, I tend not to sit around a lot. So yeah, just eat healthy. As healthy as you can, but don't be anal about it. And if you, if you can move around, you know, you don't have to go to a gym or go swimming or do anything, but try to be a little bit active. If you've been sat down for half an hour, get up and have a walk around. Go up your stairs and come back down again, you know, something like that. Just just be aware. That's all I would say for that one. Who do I watch on YouTube? Well, I've been on YouTube now for just about a year. And I, it changes. If I find somebody that's really, really interesting, I stick with them. But I can like watch a few videos, go off a bit, come back, watch a few more. But the people that I watch every time they upload, I would say recently, Kim from Finding My, My Style underscore X. I like Kim. She's real. Um, so, yeah, I like that about Kim. Uh, I love her channel and I'm hoping that it grows and grows and grows. So I always watch Kim. So that's finding my style underscore X. I always, always watch Tina from Tina's Talk Time. I always watch Maria Crocker, Busy Bee Marie and Georgie Grandma, who were all the four ladies um, from the Transatlantic Housewives Sunday Sunshine Club. But I don't just watch the Sunday Sunshine Club, I watch their videos as well because they do their own videos as well as doing the Sunday Sunshine Club. Um, I watch Maxine Georgina all the time, every time. I watch uh, Polly Put the Petal On. I watch um, Caroline Mrs M most of the time. Not, not every time, but most of the time. Uh, I, I, I watch... A lot of, not people all the time, but like I watch sometimes, I'll have a spate of watching cooking YouTube channels or um, this morning I've watched two sewing a bag, making a bag, you know, so it can vary. But the ones that I've mentioned, I was, they're, they're ones that I never miss a video. Yeah, I never miss a video. If I can think of another in a minute, because you forget, don't you, sometimes. But yeah, always Max, always Polly, put the path. Claire, Maria, Marie, Karen, Tina, Kim. That's about six or seven, isn't it? So that's who I watch on YouTube. We're all red. Oh, we're at nine minutes, so we're not doing too badly. No, we're not. We're more than that. Which part of the UK do I come from and have I been anywhere else in the USA apart from Las Vegas? And did I like it there? I come from Lancashire. Um, and within Lancashire, I come from a very small village and very close to what we call the Ribble Valley. Um, so it's quite quiet and I live next door to a farm. Um, there's there's not very many houses in this village, but we do have one pub <laughs> and we have a post box. Don't have a shop. So anywhere I want to go, I have to get in the car and go. And um, so, yes, I am a Lancashire lass and very proud of it too. I have lived in different places. I've lived in Manchester for a while and I've lived um, outside this country for a short time. Um, but yeah... Lancashire. And no, I have never been anywhere else in the USA apart from Las Vegas. But I have to say, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved it. I think if I didn't have a lot of willpower, I could be addicted to gambling. I love gambling. But I don't like the gambling where you're um, 
at a table playing cards or spinning the wheels or that kind of thing. I like the slot machines. So what I did was when I went to Las Vegas, I think I went for 10 days and I allowed myself £50 a day to spend on the machines. If I lost it, I lost it and I didn't put any more in. If I won, I could play a bit longer or I could keep it and add it to my day after. And that's what I did. Yeah, and I thoroughly, you can't go to Las Vegas, I don't think, and not have a little play on the on the machines. But they can get very addictive, yeah. I like the machines on in Blackpool, if I go to Blackpool. I love to go in an arcade and, you know, the penny ones, the Tuttons ones, those. But in Las Vegas, there's none at all, you know, you've got to, yeah, they're a bit dearer than that. So it's quite easy to get through £50. But if you did less than £50, you could be off in 10 minutes. So, yeah, I just allowed myself that when I went. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Las Vegas is exactly what we say it is. <coughs> Everything's a lot bigger than here. Everything's very elaborate. It's massive. We have, there are malls inside the hotels in Las Vegas that are bigger than some of our shopping centres. Would you believe that? It is. It's a place you'll never see the like of anywhere else. Loved it. Loved it. Went up the stratosphere which is the tallest building. I stayed at the Luxor, which is um, like an Egyptian theme. Lovely. So I would like to go back, actually. I'd like to go back to the, uh, Las Vegas. What does my husband do or is he retired? Yes, he's retired, but he still does work for his friends now and again and the family. And he's very busy at the moment working on this place. He was um, a joiner and a builder before he retired. Yeah, so he can turn his hand to anything really. I'm very, very lucky. At the moment, he's doing an ensuite in um, an upstairs bedroom. We have three bedrooms and uh, one bathroom. So two bedrooms will share the bathroom and then the one bedroom will have the ensuite. So I've been filming it as we go along. So I'll, it, I'll be able to show it you from start to finish. It's very tiny. But what happened was, um, we didn't live in this house for a while. We've had this house for years and years and years. But um, we lived somewhere else for a short, for a, well, for a good few years, actually. About 15, over 15 years. So for that 15 years, <clears throat> we rented this property out. And we only moved back into this property. Um, actually, it was at the beginning of lockdown, would you believe it? Honestly. So what we want, we wanted to change the whole structure of the building. So downstairs where I am now, where you'll have seen in the kitchen and everything, used to used to be three separate rooms and we wanted to knock it into one front to back. So while that work was going on, we um, had the, the biggest bedroom upstairs. We turned into a lounge and off the corner of it, we took a little corner off. And um, that was a, a little kitchen, the tiniest kitchen you've ever seen in your life. Only one person could get in and you could just about turn around. <laughs> but it was, you know, we managed because we didn't want to have to cope down here. We, we're not walls down and plaster off and with girders going in and everything you can think of. So it was impossible. You couldn't have lived in it. So that's what we did. So now that downstairs is finished, um that bedroom now will become either the master bedroom or a spare bedroom with an ensuite for when people come to stay. So that's what we're on with at the moment, the ensuite part of that bedroom. So, and he's busy with that at the moment. And he's, we did everything herself in this house, everything. Obviously we couldn't lift the girders in by yourself. So we had to get friends and family to come and help us to lift those in. But, and we got somebody for the electrics but everything else fitting the kitchen, or we fit the kitchen, but um, the people came and did, um, I forgot what it's called, the worktops. What's it called? It's, it's not, uh, anyway, whatever it is, the posh worktops. <laughs> they came and did that because they have to come and measure it all. And then they go away, they make it, 
and then they bring it back and fit it so they did that but we did everything else yeah everything and you've seen we've just done the front or oh, people came and did the tarmac so we got people to do that and we got people uh obviously people made the windows but i'd fitted them all yeah everything he's just done the hallway you've seen that so that was the next job the ensuite and when the ensuite's finished um, we're redecorating the front we're doing the bed but the new bathroom and then redecorating the front bedroom and then decorating the main bedroom never ending but yeah that's what we do so that's that um how long did it take to grow my hair out well i used to ha i used to have very dark hair when i was younger like joanne's very dark well, when you've got dark hair, normally you start to go grey a bit quickly. You know, in my teens, I used to have the odd grey hair. Um, anyway, as I got older and I got more grey hairs, what I started to do was put blonde streaks in. So I ended up nearly all blonde. So then I started to, obviously, you get your grey roots. They stopped being streaks and they started to become like a proper grey root. So... What I did was I just stuck with it and I had a few blonde, grey, blondy thing streaks put in me blonde, if you know what I mean. A bit lighter, put in me blonde. And um, it does grow very fast, does my hair. So I just stuck with it and, it and it didn't look too bad. And I kept getting it cut, getting it cut, getting it cut until um, all the blonde had gone. Probably about, well, I don't know how much will it grow um an inch would you say in three months so three six nine twelve didn't it didn't take a year i don't think no it didn't take a year match done and i just stuck with it best thing i ever did if you're thinking of doing it do it but if you've got really dark hair um i would have some streaks put in just so that it blends a bit more and it's not like a line going across your head like that that's what I would do. Or I'd just go for it and get them to take all your black out, brown, whatever it might be. And just go for it all in one go. How long have I been retired and have I any tips for not getting bored from a lady who's retiring at the end of July? Right. Uh, how long have I been retired? I'm 68 now. I had to wait till I was 66 to retire. But what I did was, um, I worked a lot of extra shifts at work and I saved up so that I had a year's worth of wages because I got quite poorly towards the end of um, my working life and um, I couldn't wait to stop working. So I did that, I did extra hours, saved up and I had a year's worth of wages, so I finished when I was 60. It was, I was 66. So I must have had to wait till I was 67 for my pension. And I am now 68. So, is it two years? Three years? Anyway, whatever it is, two or three years. Sometimes my memory goes, I get brain fog um it's either two or three years and um i would suggest that you try all different things whatever it might be some craft things walking what whatever art painting whatever you think you might enjoy try lots of different things and then you'll narrow it down and do the things that you like doing Retire, you've worked all your life. Retirement is for enjoying yourself. Oh, do a YouTube channel. Whatever it is that tickles your fancy. And I would say, if you can, try to stop saying no to things. So if you get invited out by your friend for lunch, yes. If you get invited to a party, yes. If you get invited to just go out shopping with a friend, yes. Go. 
make yourself do it even if you don't feel like it if you can um because you never know how long you know you've got to enjoy yourself do you i mean i learned this lesson when i had my mini stroke um and then when i had you know my carotid artery done and since then i've had quite a bit of ill health so if if i get the opportunity to do something and i can do it i do it because like i say who knows what tomorrow's going to bring none of us do do we so just enjoy every bit that you can enjoy do what you like doing and um a lady once said to me don't be worried about your house i mean i i am a bit house proud you know what i mean and i do like a clean house but I wouldn't put it over and above spending time with my family, going out with a friend, because there's always another day, there's always another hour. And she used to she used to say to me, when you die, they won't put on your grave, but she had a clean house. And she's right. They won't, will they? Nobody's going to ever think that. You need to enjoy yourself while you're still alive and while you still can. So that's what I would say. Do what you enjoy doing. Find whatever it might be. Some people like gardening. You know, some people like walking. Some Go on holiday if you can afford to go on holiday. Do whatever you like doing and do a lot of it. But any negative people, anybody that doesn't bring you positive vibes, you know, don't push them away a bit. You know, give them a bit of distance between you. And like I say, bring positive into your life and enjoy every minute that you can enjoy yeah that's what i would say so i've been on too long so i'm going to wrap it up here and um, i hope you've enjoyed it um, and if you have please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already leave me a heart emoji in the comments section and hit the notification bell so that you won't set it to all so that you won't miss an upload. And if you have any questions, please do, you know, put them there and I'll uh, I'll start making another list and in a few months time, we'll do another one. You can ask me anything. I'm not promising that I'll answer every question. It depends what it is, but you can always ask. So I hope you have a lovely, lovely week ahead because I think this is now going up on Sunday. It will be Sunday when you've listened to this. So. Um, have a lovely week ahead and um, don't know what's coming up next. It may well be the accessories video and I definitely have a Marks and Sparks coming up but I had to send one thing back and order another. Um, something came wrong so I'll we'll have to wait for that now. So fingers crossed, stay well and I shall see you on the next one. Bye for now. Bye.